Man, I must really be turning into sort of like an Arlo kind of channel now. Like, my true intention is like to do news reports, um, walkthroughs, but really what people want to see is my critical-ish look on what Nintendo is doing right now. Um, top videos during this period due to analytics being um, talking about 3D All-Stars being a limited run and uh, you know just, just a little more critical opinion based content. So that's what I'm going to be sharing today is some more stuff. It's sort of a sequel to my 3D All-Stars rant. Uh, don't don't watch that if you haven't already. I, I'm not going to get you to watch it. Just a, a quick sum up. Um, in September, during the Mario 35th announcement direct, Nintendo told us that we were going to be getting Super Mario 35, uh, Super Mario All-Stars, Super Mario 3D All-Stars, sorry, and the Super Mario Bros. collectible game and watch, okay? We were told that those three things were coming out, uh, among other things, but the, the reason why I bring up these three is they are limited edition. So, certain things like the game and watch makes sense that they're limited. It's supposed to be a novelty piece, right? No one needed that game and watch. No one really wants it, per se. So, it made, made sense. You wanted it to be a collectible thing. Mario 35 made absolutely no sense because it's an online game. If you spent that much time programming it, I want to actually keep it running, if I'm being honest. But, um, going off of the last rant, 3D All-Stars was the weirdest one out of the bunch because it basically wanted to be a collector's item that everyone wanted. Unlike the Game & Watch where it's like only true Nintendo fans, well not true Nintendo fans, but like Nintendo fans would want that, right? But everyone who likes Mario, so you don't need to be a Nintendo fan, you want to be a Mario fan. If you're a Mario fan, you will pick up 3D All-Stars. Because a lot of people don't have the original systems, so that they can't play the original game. I'm an exception here. It's kind of ironic, but I spent the last, like, four years building up my gaming collection so that way I could just play Mario 64. I could play Mario Sunshine. You know, that happened very gradually, and I might do a video on, like, actually my motivations of becoming a gaming collector, but that's not today. What I want to talk about, though, is the fact that everyone wants... 3D All-Stars, but Nintendo wants to make it a limited run. Brief recap of what happened in the last video is I believe it is a way to drive up the price on the secondhand market. Because once 3D All-Stars is being taken off the shelves on March 31st of this year, then where does it go? eBay, Amazon, stuff like that, right? But that means people can charge whatever they want for it because they know people want to buy it. The higher the demand is, the higher the price goes up because there's less, the less supply, the higher the demand gives you your price, what people are willing to pay for it. And this happened with the NES Mini back in 2016. I think the scene's finally kind of calmed down a little bit after five years. <laughs> My point is, is that Nintendo I feel want to scare you into getting 3D All-Stars. They knew that if you didn't pay the $80, I'm Canadian, so like I think it's 60 in the US, but $80 here, if you're not going to pay that much now, well, you're going to be paying $200 for it later kind of idea. That's what my original prediction is. But since then, and by the way, when I say since then, this is so like, months ago, like I just am so behind on my videos, but um, lots of news. So the first Fire Emblem came out, sorry, not Fire Emblem, 
Stupid. Final Fantasy. The first Final Fantasy game, a popular RPG series of games. I'm not a fan of them. But that's my opinion. Hot take. The first one was never released in America. Um, I believe it was like the fourth one was released. And like since then they've been released in North America. But first one had never been officially released in America. Especially with English subtitles. Well, like not subtitles, but like the text was English. So if you imported it, Final Fantasy 1, and you got your Famicom, your Japanese NES, to play it, you still wouldn't know what's going on. It's all in Japanese. This is a pretty big deal for a lot of fans of the Final Fantasy series because they actually can play the game. And so you can buy it as a physical collector's edition or you can buy it digitally and it's just the game. Sort of like the virtual console in a way, right? Um, but what intrigued me was Nintendo also said that's, that this was limited edition. And on top of that, the day it's being pulled off the shelves is March 31st. So what? what's so significant about March 31st? There's one more thing I'd like to tell you about, which is... Um, Super Mario Maker for the Wii U. Nintendo is finally saying, okay, we're, we're done. That, that game's run its course. Everyone's kind of moved on to the Switch now. And I've made my point of view clear of how I think Mario Maker 1 level should be able to still be accessed through the Switch via some compatibility. Yes, this would be a big project. And no, I don't know no, enough about coding to give them a solution myself because I did make certain tweaks, small ones, but there's still tweaks that basically you need to run an emulator in Mario Maker 2 so Mario Maker 1 level still worked. You know what I mean? Like spikes under a semi-solid in Mario Maker 1 will still hurt you, but in Mario Maker 2 the semi-solid is slightly higher so the spikes don't hurt you. It's very subtle, but it can't jeopardize someone's level in some way, depending on how you programmed it. So it has to be just like Mario Maker 1. Nintendo said on March 31st, they are stripping the ability to upload levels to Mario Maker 1. So, you can still go on Course World, and you can still download courses, but you just can't upload anymore. On March 31st. Okay, so what's going on with March 31st? We have three things that are somewhat irrelevant to each other, but they all have one thing in common. They're all ending March 31st. The final thing I'd like to share before we dive into that is Nintendo, Nintendo of America's President Doug Bowser said in an interview. So I'm paraphrasing because I'm going off the top of my head right now. So I really don't remember the exact word for word of the interview. Here's what was said. Something around the lines of the interviewer, the recorder, asked, okay, so why is 3D All-Stars limited? Everyone kind of wants to know that. And uh, the president said, I'm sorry, but I can't speak of plans past March 31st. He didn't answer the question. The question was just, why, why is it limited? And so, could have been a very easy answer. But he said, I can't speak of plans after March 31st. So, basically, anything past March, he can't speak of. This makes me think Nintendo is doing something big, okay? That there's something that they're planning that's going to be, like, not game changing, but it's not conventional to what we know right now. Because if it was more of the same, well then why keep it a secret from us, right? If it's just more of the same that we're used to, there's no reason to hide. So that's what makes me think that it, it's gotta be big, okay? It's gotta be something new. And so my first thought right off the bat was virtual console thinking that maybe we're getting the virtual console back on the eShop. The eShop on the Switch, I feel, is the eShop has gone down and down in proper popularity as the systems 
has gone on. With the Wii really strong, then the 3DS, the Wii U, and the Switch, it's like it does it isn't even there for me. Now I know a lot of people like to purchase their games digitally, and good on you if you do, but I prefer physical media, and again that's a conversation for a different video. Right now though, I want to say that there's nothing on the eShop that really sparked my interest as I usually only download older games that are really overpriced on the used market right now. Thank you, Paper Mario. So I'm thinking for the eShop or Game Virtual Console back that's been on really all Nintendo systems prior to the Switch. And that would mean that Switch Online kind of loses its perk. But here's what I'm thinking, that maybe NES and SNES will still be online exclusive, but we'll get things such as Nintendo 64, GameCube on the Virtual Console. Why do I say those? Well, remember, 3D All-Stars has 64, Super Mario 64, and Super Mario Sunshine. Both are probably the biggest games on the system. Just when you think of the system, that's what you think of, sort of thing. So, if you were to launch a, the Virtual Console with N64 and GameCube right there, but you didn't have Mario 64 or Sunshine on it, you kind of lost actually a lot of the general market, because you know, when you think Nintendo, most people right away just think Mario, right? Like, that Super Nintendo World in Universal Studios kind of proves my point there, because it's called Super Nintendo World, yet it's just Mario. There's no F-Zero, no Legend of Zelda, no Kirby. It's just Mario. So that would kind of imply that Nintendo kind of views themselves like that as well. So if that's the case, you would want to launch your virtual console with 64 and Sunshine. If we really want to push it for Wii, we can, but I'm just focusing on N64 and GameCube right now. So, if Nintendo did that though, they know that they'd be out a lot of money from a portion of the general market that bought 3D All-Stars. And so if they kept 3D All-Stars going forever and ever, like Mario Odyssey or 3D World, you know, like just forever on the market, they knew that no one would buy it on the virtual console. And so you take it off, and people who were like, oh, snooze, you lose kind of thing, it's like, but you can buy 64 for 10 bucks on the virtual console. Now, one can make the argument, okay, let's say it's 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy, and they're all $10 each, okay? It's overpriced for a digital game. That's 30 bucks. They're not making near as much money, and that is right. So... I'm just, I can't think of too many reasons. But I want to suspect Virtual Console. I know that I may have said that NES and Super Nintendo aren't going to be part of this Virtual Console, and that's going to stay online, and that's going to be true, I think. And that Final Fantasy 1 is going on to Nintendo Switch Online. And why is this? Well, Nintendo can gauge, judging by the amount of people who bought the Collector's Edition or bought it on the eShop, how many people are interested, and then put it onto Nintendo Switch Online. Again, this also has holes, okay? Um, this is all just speculation, of course. It does have holes, because it was already on the eShop. You could already purchase the game on the eShop, so why would you put it on Nintendo Switch Online when you don't make direct money from the product? Good question, I don't know. But I'm just throwing it out there that if Nintendo could see, oh yeah, there's actually quite a bit of demand for Final Fantasy 1, and then you put it on the Switch Online, how many people are going to buy Switch Online then? The people who missed out on Final Fantasy 1, right, who didn't want to pay for, like, for the Collector's Edition, for example, they didn't want to pay that much. You can have it for free with your membership, right? So, you know, it's a little bit of dangling the carrot in front of the horse kind of thing. Where you just want to keep them going, or is it the thing with cheese in front of my? I don't remember. Um, you, you know, they just are like, here's Final Fantasy One, but you need the subscription, and so that's what I think is going on. Mario Maker One, I think, is just a coincidence that they chose March thirty first to discontinue Mario Maker One, 
so it may have been unfair to throw it in the boat with the rest of the guy, rest of these guys, but it, it's still there. It's still in this situation of being discontinued. That was a big part of Mario Maker One was uploading courses. That's half the game right there. Here's the problem. Nintendo is discontinuing the uploading process. And the question is, is this part of a strategy? Probably not, because if we know Nintendo, they like to be cruel and heartless a lot of the time. But, if I was a businessman, I would then see, well, okay, we made this big public announcement that Mario Maker 1's upload is being discontinued. But then you gauge. In March, how many people actually started playing Mario Maker 1? Like, after that announcement, you kind of gauge, is it going back up in use because it's an online game? Sure, you might not be able to tell when they're just making a course, but you know when they're uploading a course because it's on Nintendo's server. So then all of a sudden you can see, okay, amount of uploads is going up, amount of plays are going up, and more people are... Because in Mario Maker 1, you have to get upgraded in order to upload more courses. So you could then see it. And more and more people are going up in tiers. So that must mean that there's enough popularity to keep Mario Maker 1 going. And that can lead to future options. Because, let's be honest, can you really delete something like Mario Maker 1? Because like the Wii Shop channel... They kind of phased it out. It wasn't like, okay, we shop channel's done. No, it was, okay, first, we're giving you a warning. Second, we're making it so you can't get Wii points anymore. So whatever Wii points you have, you could spend it, right? And then finally, taking it down entirely. I think that's maybe exactly what Nintendo is doing here. Is they're giving us a warning, then they're phasing out uploading, and then all of Course World is going to be gone. But can you really take out something like Course World? They created something big, and Mario Maker has been around for five and almost going on six years as of this video. Five years, that's half a decade. And I know the Wii U wasn't a popular system, but just think of how many levels were made in the last half a decade. And you're just gonna delete them all? Sure, they deleted Beavers, but are, would they actually go that far to delete what people sunk so much work into? Yeah, they're not going to delete the ones that are on your system, but how are you going to play those levels? Is there going to be like, I'm going to create a second Wii U account, and that's just going to be for downloading courses, because for those who haven't played Mario Maker 1, if you download a course, it goes in your course making slots. So that means that let's say you want to use like all your slots. So I think there's 30 multiplied by four. So you can make 120 levels. That's a lot. So let's say you want to make 120 levels. If you download a course, all of a sudden you can only make 119. That's how downloaded courses work. Unlike Mario Maker 2, because Switch is portable, so you want, like, I've done this where I've downloaded some courses, went on, like, a full-day road trip, and since I had no internet, I couldn't go on Course World, but I could play the ones I downloaded. And so that's why there's a whole separate downloaded section for that use entirely, is you don't have Wi-Fi, but you want to play courses. But Mario Maker 1, it's not like that. When you download, that takes up one of your course-making slots. So... Is Nintendo going to see a boost and all of a sudden, whoa, how is there double the amount of users right now, but they're not uploading anything, and all they're doing is downloading their favorite courses because they know it's all going to be gone. Are they going to keep Course World up? Well, I'm going to keep pushing that they should make an option in Mario Maker 2 to still access Mario Maker 1 courses. I'm not saying for them to do it vice versa, where you can access Mario Maker 2 levels in Mario Maker 1, but seeing that all the assets, except the weird mushroom, all the assets in Mario Maker 2 are from Mario Maker 1 and then some, 
make sense that you should be able to play Wii U courses. The 3DS does that, right? And here's another thing. Okay, so the 3DS, I can read about this even longer, but I'm not. But you can download courses on your 3DS, and so I would think, oh, I own the 3DS version of Mario Maker. I'll just download courses on that because I never use it. But you can't search up courses. You Even if you find a maker that you like, you can't access their page or anything. Like, Mario Maker 3DS was garbage. When it came to Course World, you couldn't even upload. But the Wii U, I think it's very important that those courses will be able to stay played. Now I'm overreacting a little bit, yes, because all they said is we're taking away uploads. And it is possible they're using this as another theory. They're using this to just figure out, okay, um, if we're going to make a Mario Maker 2 emulator for Mario Maker 1, there's this many levels. And they can since they could cut off the flow from the first game, that means that basically anyone who may have a glitch idea, they can go through the thousands of courses. If they really want to, they can go through each and every one and say, this course won't work because it uses this kind of glitch. And like, Nintendo had a strict glitch policy for the longest time on Mario Maker 1 until like about 2017 when the Switch came out, but um, especially when Mario Maker 2 came out then they really stopped caring, but they can make sure that Mario Maker 2 um, it's hard to recreate a glitch because a glitch is unintentional, right? So you don't know how it was made per se, so how if the glitch was fixed in Mario Maker 2 how do you make an emulator that can factor in the glitches, right? So you have to just make it at face value, like the weird mushroom works like this. You don't just phase out the weird mushroom or the mystery mushroom, right? You have to keep them in, you can't give exceptions, but they, but those, they know how they work so they can fix that well as Glitches, they don't know how they necessarily work. So they may not be able to make exceptions like that. Thanks for keeping you guys so long. Another rant video, and I'm not a very big fan of these, but I mean, if you care about my opinion, I'm fine with voicing it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be recording this right now. So, um, again, I just want to thank everyone who has been watching the channel because uh, I haven't been uploading on a schedule for like the longest time. It seems like I do about one video a month almost, if that, just because I I have other projects that I work on rather than like back in 2017 when I this was my top priority and now I, I have way other I have other things to work on. So I'm glad that you guys are able to come back and watch the videos that I have. And I, I know as myself, seeing a YouTuber who hasn't uploaded in a while kind of ticks me off. I'm like, well, well, when will you upload a video? But I know that's very hypocritical because I'm like that. I, I hardly upload. And it's just because it's, oh, it, it's work. You have to put in the work to make a video. And so... I'm just happy that all you guys are watching. If I can ask for a favor, it's to check me out on Brighton right now. If you can, subscribe and watch the videos. They're my older videos. I'm trying to get all my content onto Brighton. But I have to upgrade to the next tier in order... Actually, I think it's like to the next... To like the fourth tier of video uploads. In order to hold all the videos I've uploaded throughout the years. So I believe the latest video on there was um, Greeny1885 and I playing the Scare Scraper. If you want to check that out, link in the description. It's got to link you to Brighton. Ha! That's how I get you. Because I'm not going to link the YouTube one. <laughs> so evil. Thank you for watching. And until next time, I was the Zach Tack. Z.